Have you noticed that everyone is a narcissist nowadays? If a relationship breaks up, they're a narcissist. Somebody does something that you don't like, they're a narcissist. To be honest, the word is so overused that it makes it really hard to distinguish, well, what is unhealthy narcissism? What is a malignant narcissist? And then on top of that, we start hearing phrases like, oh, so-and-so is high on the scale of NPD. And it's like, what scale? Is there a way to tell where the narcissist in your life is on that scale? Is there a way to tell where you are, where I am on that scale? And here's another important thing to consider. If you don't like where you are on that scale and you start changing where you are on that scale, what happens to the relationship? I don't know about you, but I think those are important topics to consider and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So let's dive in. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a trauma-informed coach. I'm also a somatic experiencing practitioner and the founder of the School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership. I consider it like a nervous system gym membership where I meet live weekly on Zoom with survivors of emotional trauma from all over the world that are ready to do the inner work to heal from past unhealed trauma, childhood trauma, CPTSD, and or narcissistic abuse. There's a current seven day free trial. It's good through the end of October. So if you wanna come and join us even just for one meeting, you can do so with the link in the description below. So let's first talk about what is the scale that we can use to help determine where the narcissists are in our life or where we are on that scale because again, we may not like where we are on that scale and the beautiful thing is is that we can change it. So first things first, what is that scale? So the best resource that I found so far that explains where we are on the spectrum of healthy, unhealthy narcissism and unhealthy codependency, right? Because that's the scale. Healthy being in the middle and one side being malignant narcissism and the other side being codependency. Well, the resource that I use is from the book, The Human Magnet Syndrome by Ross Rosenberg. Some people like him, some people don't. Regardless, if you want to learn more about the scale, I'm gonna explain it briefly here, but you can do more research on your own if you wanna get that publication. Okay, in simplified terms, the foundation of any relationship, friendship or romantic relationship, is the love, respect, and care we give to each other. Some people are other focused. So the love, care, and respect they give outweighs the love, care, and respect they receive. They're more comfortable caretaking. They're more comfortable giving. So people that identify as being oriented more towards others and giving would be on the side of the scale of codependency. And then the flip side of that is being oriented more towards self, where your focus is on the love, care, and respect you receive as opposed to giving. Now, there's a healthy realm on both sides whether it's the codependency side or the narcissistic side, and there's an unhealthy side to both. So let's dive in with what that looks like. But before we do, I wanted to mention that depending on where we are on the scale is going to determine who we wind up attracting in our life and opposites attract, which is why we always see that people high on the scale of NPD often are with people high on the scale of codependency. And that has to do with just like a magnet is repelled when things are the same. There's resistance here. They don't want to go together. But I flip it over. The exact opposite becomes a match. And that's what happens with codependents and narcissists, which is why we want to know where we are on the scale. Because if I'm at a negative five on the scale of unhealthy codependency, I'm going to be attracted to or wind up attracting a positive five on the opposite side. So the unhealthiest place you can be on either side of the scale is either a negative five, which would be high on the codependency scale or a positive five on the side of the narcissist scale. And I just wanna focus right now on the side of the codependent scale. And I wanna read to you directly from the publication. If you're at a negative five on the side of the codependency and your relationships are focused on giving on others, then this is a codependent who is completely absorbed with the love, respect, care needs of others while completely ignoring and devaluing their own. They're often powerless and unable or unwilling to seek love, respect, and care from their romantic partners and even their closest friends. And so let's talk about what a negative one would look like, which would be the healthiest place you could be on the codependent side. 
And that says, someone with a healthy balance between love, respect, and care for themselves and others. They typically seek life experiences and relationships in which they can satisfy their own love, respect, and care needs. They tend to participate in and appreciate relationships based on a reciprocal and mutual distribution of love, respect, and care. Although they derive meaning and happiness from helping and caring for others, they will not tolerate a selfish or self-centered romantic partner. They often enjoy caring for others, but do not identify as a caretaker or helper. They do not feel guilty or needy when asking for love, respect, and care from others. So you can see there's the unhealthy side on the codependency scale and the healthy side. And so to me, most people that are at a negative five, where you don't feel comfortable, where you're scared to ask for your own needs, where you just want to make other people happy, you think it's your job to make other people happy, you feel guilty or shame if you're needing something from someone else, or you feel selfish when you're asking for your needs to be met. To me, those are signs that in childhood, sadly, Maybe you had unhealthy caregivers, maybe parents that were alcoholics, or there's some unhealthy dynamic that has put negative beliefs in you that are still running in your adult life. And unfortunately, once that template in childhood is created, until we deconstruct the beliefs that we don't agree with, and that honestly are not a part of who we really are, we stay living in that template and attracting people that almost recreate the same dynamics that we had in childhood. And so the way that you move from unhealthy codependency from that negative five to the negative one is by working through things like guilt, beliefs like I don't matter, it's my job to make other people happy, boundaries are bad, it's selfish to care about myself. It's about changing those beliefs so that you begin giving yourself the same love, respect, and care that you give others. So instead of putting people up here and yourself down here, you start getting a healthier self image, living in healthier beliefs where you're now on the same level as others and you expect reciprocity. You expect to not just be the one giving, but you also expect to receive as well. That's healthy relationships. So that's how we move from one side to the other is really about doing the inner work to heal ourselves from our unhealed childhood trauma or past trauma, which by the way, is what I specialize in helping people to do in the School of Transformation. So if you don't know anything about the school and what we do, make sure you check out the link to see if it might be a resource that can be helpful for you. However, if we do not take the time to do the inner work to heal from our trauma beliefs that are still creating a template in us, that is going to dictate our relationships, if we don't take the time to heal from them, what we tend to do is try to find someone to help us to heal. So we go into a relationship hoping this person or the relationship will heal those wounds. And that's exactly what happens and why we wind up getting attracted to malignant narcissists. So that being said, let's go to the flip side. Let's look at what a positive five, which is the most unhealthy level of someone high on the scale of NPD, and what a positive one would look like as well. Looking at the most unhealthy level on the scale found in the book of the human magnet syndrome on the side of somebody that is self-oriented, right? Where everything is about them, the love, respect, and care that they receive. It says a pathological narcissist. There's a difference between a pathological narcissist and a narcissist, but that's for a whole nother video. Anyway, it says a pathological narcissist who is unable and unmotivated to love, respect, and care for others. They are consumed with fulfilling their own love, respect, and care needs and have no intention of reciprocating. They have great difficulty exhibiting empathy, unconditional positive regard, or love. When they do give love, respect, and care to others, it is typically with strings attached. They are not able to comprehend or accept their pathological levels of narcissism. If confronted about the love, respect, and care imbalances, they will often strike back with direct or passive aggression. So that's on the most unhealthy side of the scale. But what would a plus one be where somebody has an orientation more of receiving love, care, and respect as opposed to giving? What would the healthy side look like? Well, here's the positive one on the narcissism side of that scale. So it says, 
someone with a healthy balance of love, respect, and care for themselves and others. They tend to participate in and appreciate relationships based on a reciprocal and mutual distribution of love, respect, and care. So, so far, it sounds exactly like the minus one on the codependency scale, right? Here's where it starts to differ. It says, they value personal and professional goals and ambitions, which they confidently pursue. From the pursuit of their own aspirations, they are also cognizant of the necessity to love, respect, and care for their romantic partner. They effortlessly provide love, respect, and care to their romantic partner where necessary or requested. They may identify with the role of both caretaker and helper while wanting to fulfill their own desires. Okay, bottom line, the reason I read the most unhealthy level of both narcissists and codependent, as well as the healthiest, is to show there is a scale. And to sum it up, it's based on the love, respect, and care you give and take. So that's the scale. I'm really simplifying this. But let's shift into how to change where you are on the scale and what happens to the relationship when you do. With myself, when I started my own healing and I learned about this information, I realized I was at a minus five on the codependency side. I had no boundaries. I felt guilty if I was asking for something, even if it was just getting my needs met. I felt fear and uncomfortable standing up for myself and caring about my own needs. And again, that has to do with the beliefs that are instilled in us in childhood or in a long-term unhealthy adult relationship. When I realized I was at a minus five, I was actually in a relationship with somebody that was at a plus five. We were exact magnets from each other. I began doing the inner work to change my beliefs. Instead of trying to change my beliefs by making this other person happy and then somehow believing that because I was making this person happy, then I was enough, I started learning how to have self-worth how to have a healthy self-image, how to put down boundaries, how to heal from traumatic beliefs that no longer served me and that were never true to begin with. And here's what began happening. And I want to really clarify, if you're with a malignant narcissist and you begin healing and going from a plus five to a plus four to a plus three, plus two, which means you are little by little reclaiming your self-worth, reclaiming your power, by realizing you're allowed to have boundaries, you're allowed to say no, you're allowed to have expectations. That's where we start going in that direction. Malignant narcissists, when you begin getting healthier, I'm gonna tell you what was told me when I was healing. The person that was helping me said, Michelle, you're going to get better, but this person is going to get worse. And the reason for that is remember, a plus five narcissist, which is at the highest level on the scale of NPD, expects 100% love, care, and respect for them. They do not want to give anything to the other person. They expect you to revolve 100% around them. So as you're getting healthier and expecting more healthy reciprocity, that does not suit somebody that's at a plus five on the NPD scale. And so to try to get you back into submission and to push you back down to that minus five they will often get more aggressive. Their punishments, emotional punishments can get worse and sometimes it can even cross over to the physical realm. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this work. And now let's talk about friendships because as you're moving from a minus five in the direction of a minus one on the codependency scale, which means again, you are expecting the same amount of love, care and respect that you give, right? Or at least close. It's no longer like this. At least it's really um, comfortable. It feels good. The amount of love, care, and respect you get as much as you give. As you're moving in that direction, you're going to notice your friendships change. If you were at a minus five, you might realize that all of your friendships are one-sided. That doesn't always mean that all of your friends are narcissists. I really want to throw this out there. It might mean that when we are at a minus five, we can actually accidentally push people in their dynamics with us to the opposite side. For example, if we show up in a relationship in the belief, I don't matter, only you matter, right? It's not about me, it's all about you. Well, with time, that friendship or that friend is going to be accustomed to making it all about them as well. 
And so it's gonna feel one-sided. You're going to feel taken advantage of because you're giving so much and you're not getting any back. But there's the saying, we teach people how to treat us. And so as we are learning to go from that negative five towards a negative one, we begin showing up in different beliefs. We begin teaching people that their love, respect, and care matters, and so does ours. And so if any of your friends are unhealthy, you'll find that the friendship doesn't last. Something happens, either you don't tolerate it anymore, or they're not happy having to reciprocate. But there's also the possibility that some of those friends we're showing up in that way because that's how we were showing up in the relationship. And as we change, they start changing in the relationship as well. And a friendship that may have been one-sided at one time can become reciprocal. As we're changing, they start showing up differently as well. So where are you on that scale? When it comes to love, respect, and care, do you give it away 100%? Do you expect reciprocity even though you're more of a giver? That's gonna determine where you are in your scale. Where are your friendships and where's the romantic relationship? Are you happy with where you are on the scale? If you're not, if you're wanting to learn how to have more reciprocal relationships, but you just struggle to do so, or you feel so uncomfortable, or you can't handle conflict, because expecting love, care, and respect from others has us showing up in ways that can make some people not happy, right? Especially the takers in life. It can cause conflict or it can cause somebody to be disappointed in us. If that is too overwhelming for you because of unhealed childhood wounds, then I really wanna invite you to the School of Transformation because that's where we go in and we really begin rewiring our inner template so that our external relationships can be healthy and happy. Come join me as well as a beautiful group of survivors from all over the world that are moving towards that healthy realm that were unfortunately born into dynamics where we were placed in an unhealthy level of codependency and we are working our way towards being healthy. So I invite you, come check out the School of Transformation.